we have water at high pressure, 10 megapascals, 200 degrees C, and we're going to expand it through a throttle to a much lower pressure, 0.5 megapascals. And what we know from first law of balance that the enthalpy doesn't change because we assume it's adiabatic, this is a fast process, there's not much time for heat transfer, and there's no moving parts, so there's no shaft work. And the question is, what is the final state of the water? First thing we're going to do is draw a diagram to represent the process. So I've drawn the initial conditions and then we don't know the final temperature. And we know from the energy balance and the problem statement that delta H is equal to zero. So we can look up H1 in the steam tables, 855.8. So this is actually for a compressed liquid. So pressure is significantly higher than saturation pressure. The saturation pressure, this temperature is 1.55 megapascals. And we could actually use the enthalpy at the saturation pressure because that's 852.3. So really very small difference between the two, but if we have the data that's more accurate, we'll use that. And so that means we know H2 is just H1. And so we have two parameters that specify the state of the steam. We have the pressure and we have the enthalpy. So if we go to the steam tables at this pressure, we find that the enthalpy for the liquid at this condition is 640.09 in kilojoules per kilogram. And the enthalpy for the vapor is 2748 kilojoules per kilogram. As you can see, we're at this pressure where an enthalpy 855.8, which is in between these two, which means we have a liquid and a vapor, and it means we're at saturation condition. So the final temperature is 151.8 degrees C because that's saturation temperature at 0.5 megapascals, and then we can determine what's the fraction of liquid and what's the fraction of vapor in this exit stream. So H2, which we know is a combination of liquid and vapor, so X is the fraction that's vapor, so final enthalpy is the fraction that's vapor times the enthalpy per kilogram of vapor and then 1 minus x would be the fraction that is liquid times the enthalpy per kilogram of the liquid. And so the only number we don't know here is x. And so the fraction that is vapor is 0.1. So that means our exit stream is 10% vapor and 90% liquid at saturation temperature 151.8 degrees C. In this problem, we're going to look at a sealed constant volume container that starts out with 9 tenths of a kilogram of liquid water and 1 tenth of a kilogram of water vapor. It's at 0.1 megapascals pressure. And then the question is, if we add heat to this system, namely 2,752 kilojoules, what is the final pressure and what is the final temperature? So again, let's start with a diagram. So I draw on a diagram to represent the process. And we have 9 tenths of a kilogram of liquid, but this liquid at the bottom of the container here does not take up a large fraction of the volume because of the dramatic difference in the specific volume between the vapor and the liquid. We finish, I'm guessing we have a vapor. We, we don't know for sure until we solve the problem. But what we're going to do to solve the problem is first, the initial volume and the final volume are the same. And in this case, we can talk about specific volume because we have one kilogram. And the final internal energy is the initial internal energy plus the amount of heat that's added. So this is just 
first law for a closed system delta u is q plus w there's no moving parts so w is zero so we know the final value once we go to the steam tables and likewise we can find the the volume so the volume initially the fraction that's vapor x times the volume vapor and one minus x is a fraction that's liquid specific volume of the liquid so these values we can look up in the steam tables at the conditions that we start so we're at 0 0.10 megapascals that means because we have vapor and liquid present we're at saturation temperature and so that's 99.6 degrees c and so reading the values out of the steam tables at saturation conditions the initial volume and also the final volume v2 very close to the volume just of the vapor phase and then the initial internal energy we're going to get the same way we have a tenth of a kilogram of vapor i'm going to multiply that by the internal energy per kilogram of the vapor and nine tenths a kilogram of liquid multiply that by the internal energy of the liquid so to determine u2 it's u1 plus the amount of heat that we've added and so our final enthalpy so now the question is what conditions do we have this volume and this internal energy we specified two properties of the steam single component system that means we completely specify the system so if we search through the steam tables and certainly we're going to start in the superheated region all vapor we find that indeed we have this value of the internal energy at 650 degrees c 2.5 megapascals pressure and so the volume at this condition differs by the volume by less than a percent so we could certainly try and do interpolation but for the accuracy of the information given this is final conditions superheated steam 650 degrees c and 2.5 megapascals